I uploaded my first video today. My first video, not... <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm <sighs> pacing in the middle of the night. Well, it's not really the middle of the night. It's more like 8, 8.30. I haven't really had a chance to do any walking like this. It's been too hot and I've been too tired and too grievy to really get a walk out on the road in nature. <laughs> Not really sure what to think. Tomorrow, I bring Milo to the vet. And I'm going to try to remember to film it. <laughs> because that dog... <sighs> that dog... <laughs> he is something. Brittany always remembered to capture all the little mundane things and somehow make them much more important than the sum of their parts. I'm not sure if I can accomplish that. I'm going to try to. So, <laughs> I'll be bringing you with me on the journey. <laughs> to <laughs> hopefully we'll get to see Milo and hopefully he'll uh oh, I'll probably do an x-ray excuse me I'll probably do an x-ray and if they've they find the the bristles of that uh brush inside of his guts at least they'll show up really easily on an x-ray. <laughs> you know, there's something really special about this path that I'm walking right now. When Brittany and I first started dating, we started <laughs> just walking around the neighborhood, <laughs> spending time together. And... <laughs> It was when she could still walk. Before cancer. Before, before we, we were even married. We would come out here late at night. And just walk and talk. If any weird animal, like a cat or a dog, would come up to us, we would give it a name and we would joke about bringing it home and having it be our first pet. <laughs> of course, knowing full well that all the animals in this neighborhood have owners. And uh, <laughs> I remember I came up with a really weird name for a cat and she was so excited about it. <laughs> It was one of the first times I had to tell her no <laughs> and tell her, no, we're not bringing that cat home. And she knew that we weren't going to be able to anyway, <sighs> but I think she was just pushing and playing a little bit. And, uh, I don't know. It was just a good memory. And, uh, <laughs> I have walked this path ran this path many times all in an effort to lose weight get my mind off of things <sighs> and not too long ago to flirt 
with my soon to be wife. <laughs> Eight months later, and it can still knock the wind out of me. I think that's the hard part. You never know when you're just gonna turn the corner in a familiar way around the house. And it was just a way that you used to do things when she was still there. <laughs> you were checking to make sure she wasn't behind the corner. So you took the corner carefully and you poked your head around. Except now she's not there. just the truth she's not physically with us <laughs> she's not physically with us anymore but we have her memories <laughs> you know uh, you know Back whenever I first started these videos, I wondered what I could say. Two months after she passed away, three months after she passed away, I bemoaned the fact that I had no good memories of her. No memories of happy. Every memory we had was of pain. <laughs> <clears throat> My best memories of her were moments where she was momentarily healed from pain or pain went away <sighs> or she fell asleep in my arms. Finally, after moaning, so, uh, excuse me, but now as time goes on, that statement's not quite correct. I have plenty of memories of her, good memories. Amazing memories. <laughs> Just as likely to make you cry <laughs> as the bad ones. Just as likely to break you out into tears. <laughs> but it's tears you would gladly cry again and again and again. Just to see her smile one more time. Just to hear her laugh in your own mind. <sighs> These set of swings over here. They are bittersweet. We had many a discussion. We had many a discussion about life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> Sitting on these swings. Gosh darn it, I miss her. <laughs> All right. Enough of this trip down memory lane. 
I've got some swinging to do and I'm not bringing you along with me. <laughs> well, it is 8 a.m. and Milo is freaking out in the seat beside me. He, uh, <laughs> he's heavy enough to set off the alarm in my car too. So, oh, it is time to bring him to the vet. More info to come. Somebody's about to get an x-ray. <laughs> oh, he was bad. He uh, walked in here. There was another dog and he just <laughs> went ballistic. <laughs> he just doesn't know what to do with other pups, huh? All right, so I'm leaving Milo with the vet for a while. Um, they did some x-rays and he is, hmm, he is, uh, he, they don't see any metal in him. So he didn't eat any of the tines or any of the, 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 the brush things, but he did gnaw on the handle, which it could be a, a chunk of plastic that's stuck in his guts. So they're gonna give him a bunch of water and hopefully make him pee a bunch and um, hopefully push that, uh, <clears throat> Uh, push whatever out or we'll figure out if his stomach empties out so um, they're going to keep him for a while for that he also has a 104 degree fever which normal for a dog is 102 um, so it's not like but it is a significant enough jump for a dog that uh, he's got a hot spot and he just had a he just had a cut uh, not cut a um a haircut so uh he just went to the groomer and he's been licking himself a lot um, on the dog parts. And so he's got a, they're assuming that the licking might have pushed uh, some bacteria up inside of him. And he's now has a bladder infection. And that's what they're assuming is causing all of this because his urine turned out to be really cloudy. <laughs> so... They're going to keep me updated, give me some phone calls as time goes on, and oh, I'll keep you guys informed. So, currently, um, fill you guys in on Milo a little bit. We, uh, I dropped him off at the vet this morning, and uh, they got back in touch with me. Um, his... His fever's coming down a little bit. Nope. His fever's coming down a little bit. He is, uh, seems like he's feeling a bit better. Uh, he did, did eat a little bit. He drank a little bit. He did pass some stool. So there's that. Um, and what was it? Yeah, and they're gonna wind up keeping him overnight. Um, it seems like he's doing quite well responding to the antibiotics, but he's going to be, uh, <clears throat> uh, they wanna make sure that whatever is in his stomach or still there uh, gets passed. So they're gonna keep him overnight. They're gonna do x-rays in the morning and they're gonna let me know. Hopefully um, the junk that's in his stomach is digested, passes through, and uh, I get to bring my, my happy puppy home. If not, I will be looking at a uh, possible surgery to remove whatever it is that's in his guts. So I'll keep you guys posted. <laughs> <laughs> Milo. Milo in the cone of shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay all right buddy <laughs> all right seven hundred dollars later <laughs> gosh so um turns out he just uh, had a bladder infection and uh he was licking himself to the point of uh <laughs> he was licking himself to the point of uh, giving himself a bladder infection, and that's what happened. He licked up some, uh, he licked the bacteria into his urethra and gave himself a bladder infection. 
there was nothing in his stomach so he didn't eat the he didn't eat the hairbrush or he did eat the hairbrush and it passed or he just chewed the hairbrush and hit it so i can't find it look at this dog <laughs> he's so funny oh, i love you milo um and uh, I've got a bunch of medications, and uh, I bought some more trifexis for both of my poop, uh, both of my pooches. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope I caught that. <laughs> oh, it's too funny! All right, I've got to get home. <laughs> so, but I wish I could film this forever. <laughs> the saga of Milo is mostly over. Um, yeah, the saga of Milo and the hairbrush is mostly over now. So. Hopefully. <laughs> Gosh, I love him.